We're joined today by Hakan Daktas, the CEO of Newport World Resorts. Thank you for being with us. Hello. You've been with Newport World Resorts, formerly Resorts World Manila, for over 15 years. Um, how mature would you say is the company? We are the first integrated resort in Manila after PACOR decided to issue licenses to private enterprise. And the first four years of our operation was um, we were the only uh, player in town. And I believe that that time frame we spent uh, with growth and perhaps we grew really quick and fast. Uh, and during that period, uh, we had a lot of issues and shortcomings, but uh, our fifth anniversary onwards, we spent quite a bit of time and added some professionals into the company. And uh, from there onwards, I can say that we progress well uh, for the maturity. Now we are 15 years old. I'm sure like every other company, we also have some room for improvement, but I can say that we are quite mature. Um, now that maturity has also expressed itself within your results. So I wanted to ask you, how is 2023, how are the 2023 results and how is Q1 looking so far? The, the maturity that we just mentioned, as well as some other factors, uh, like a couple of uh, new colleagues joining us, uh, in 2022 and 2023 uh, and uh, we are now under one umbrella rather than both Genting and AGI groups. So that creates definitely some effectivity uh, in, in our organization and that allow us to have the best result ever since we opened in 2023. Uh, we were quite happy with the, uh, with the growth. Uh, there are some slight revenue uh, issues that we face in January and February. Some of them are uh, hold issues, some luck related factors, but uh, so far March is quite good. I hope that it will allow us to compensate the first two months and we will still reach our target. Mm -hmm. Now we saw that post pandemic and even during the pandemic, uh, the mass market has, was the sustainer of the GGR within the Philippines. And you know, the mass market is obviously gonna be very, very important going forward. What is your breakdown of VIP versus mass? I think I, I would like to split it into two. When we look at the uh, international business, we are more stronger on the international side in VIP segment. But for local segment, uh, our mass is uh, quite strong. And because of the obvious margin reasons, we are more focused on mass and premium mass. We recently uh, opened in the Q4 a nice uh, club called Grand Club in our new building. So that's a sign for us to basically excel in uh, premium mass and local VIP area. Uh, that's 65, 70% of our local business. Well, competition is tough. I mean, you, we've got the four main IRs within, yeah. within the region. Uh, how are you working to increase your market share? Again, uh, as you said, competition is tough and we are not only competing within Metro Manila. There are also some successful operators, primarily in Clark, maybe in other jurisdictions too. Uh, but uh, while we are trying to get our share increase, we are also trying to welcome more international players uh, and uh, grow in certain segments where we have a higher margin. Has there been any large change? You mentioned that being under the same umbrella has made it easier. Now we know that uh, Alliance did get the shares from Genting Hong Kong. Um, has that changed anything in terms of the corporate environment, in terms of the operating environment? Uh, not really. We, we, uh, we were like a handful of guys from Genting, uh, Genting Hong Kong group. Uh, all of us remain uh, with the AGI group. So uh, we just added a couple of new uh, colleagues into the team. Uh, but uh, as I said, the changes were more positive. Uh, we are receiving macro level guidelines from our uh, chairman, Mr. Kevin Tan, and we are like having open communication channels and uh, living in the same city, just uh, 20 minutes drive from between the offices. I, I guess that simply 
makes our life easier and efficient. Definitely. Uh, speaking of more efficiency and improved operations, uh, PagCore is aiming to have different taxation changes which will affect both land-based and online. How are you expecting those tax changes to affect Newport? To be honest with you, I don't know any tax changes in land-based casinos, but uh, I'm monitoring PagCore's move uh, to basically block the illegal online gaming and move the business towards uh, legal and regulated gaming is really a, a major, major initiative. In general terms, it's not easy for any government in the world to lower the tax rate. You know, that you get a lot of uh, eyebrows and people tell you why. Uh, the governments, unfortunately, uh, don't think like businessmen and uh, and I don't want to say this to criticize the previous administrations. It's more a compliment to the uh, current administration uh, headed by Chairman Altenko. In order to make us profitable uh, and basically for us to invest, there should be some kind of reasonable tax rate because the illegal operators do not pay any tax. Uh, so. I, I need to spend some capex, some opex, a large marketing dollar. Uh, you know, online business require a lot of acquisition cost. So at the end, I am only going to go into a business if I see that there is a possibility for us to generate profits. And if the tax rate is too high, obviously we will think twice, three times, and at the end we may or we may not go into that uh, business. Uh, but if we don't, if we do not transfer the illegal business into legal, the government is not going to generate any money. Uh, we will not be able to invest and we will not be able to hire some uh, employees or, you know, uh, do things a little bit more uh, regulated environment in a regulated environment form. Uh, so, as I said, it's not a criticism to the previous administration, but I really would like to say that I salute the Pakwar administration move towards allowing us to generate business which we will generate profit as well as uh, tax revenue for government agencies. One of the components of well, the massive property that you do have is non-gaming. I know that you have invested into revamping some of the shopping alternatives and, and even some of the other um, VIP rooms, etc. Uh, how much of a component is non-gaming for your bottom line? Um, I don't really have the exact numbers, but I think uh, Newport Resorts by far is, the, uh, is having the pole position. We are definitely the number one integrated resort in terms of non-gaming revenue. Uh, we have more than 3,500 hotel rooms, uh, nearly, including the restaurants that we operate, nearly 90 restaurants. Uh, and we are just adding, uh, in second half of the year, we are going to open uh, the first Gordon Ramsay bar and grill in, in our place. So uh, we were with him in January, and after the opening, he will also come and uh, visit our place. Uh, so we are just adding uh, because in the long term um, we want to create a real integrated resort, not a casino only. Uh, people will come uh, and attend our shows. We are uh, creating one musical for this year. Uh, we are going to generate another musical for next year. We have a 1700 seat theater. Uh, as I said, 3,500 uh, hotel rooms. So when you come into Newport World Resorts, you are just going to check into our hotel and spend a few days without getting bored. That's also the experience that Macau is trying to create, you know, with um, having the whole experience being a part of one package. You want to go in and get everything from entertainment to dining to gaming. Um, that Chinese visitation, though, had been a key component before. Um, there were expectations that the Chinese visitation could come back in the second half of the year. Do you have any, any thoughts on whether that's going to happen? We operate uh, three hotels in Boracay. Uh, we have uh, nearly 1,200 rooms. Uh, and we know that there are charter flights going into Boracay, and uh, the Chinese tourists started to uh, arrive. These are more on and off travels, uh, but eventually uh, this is going to be a 
regular uh, move from China to maybe with islands to start with, and then uh, the visits will be targeted to other cities such as Cebu and Manila. Uh, 1.5 billion people, uh, I'm sure they, they've seen and visited some Chinese cities, but there's always this desire to go abroad. Every time I go uh, Hong Kong and Singapore, I see them. Uh, so it's just a matter of sequencing. And I'm sure uh, they will definitely consider Philippines because it's such a beautiful country. Um, the, the beaches offer different beauties and you can do uh, diving, you can do parasailing, uh, different water sports. Uh, and it's, it's a rich uh, Spanish and local culture. So uh, if, if I'm living in a different country and it's just a matter of three, four hours flight, I will definitely visit Philippines a few times in a year. Well, we hope to see that happening more and we hope to see everyone coming to visit Newport World Resorts. I wanted to thank you again, Hakan Daktas, the COO of Newport World Resorts. My pleasure.